It's time for Coach's Corner on KCCR and online at kccr.com. Coach's Corner is brought to you by Todd's Electric, James Pharmacy, Lamb Motors, Avera, Hawaii Federal Credit Union, and Edward Jones Financial. Coach's Corner is also brought to you by Graham Tire, Kruger Contracting, CHS River Plains, Gales Gas, Bank West, and Capital City Ford, Lincoln, and Toyota. From the KCCR Studios in Pier, KCCR award-winning sports director, John Winkler. And a good evening as we welcome you to Coach's Corner here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com as we start our program here this evening. We'll talk with Steve Steele, the Pier Governors, as we always do. We'll be followed by Tom Moore, the Soybeans Chargers, who are on their bye week. Stanley County as they take on Timber Lake. We'll talk with Max Foth of the Stanley County Buffaloes. And then we start to prepare for some state tournaments. Yeah, the state tournament's are already starting. It's going to be next week, Monday and Tuesday, for both tennis and golf. We'll talk with Tiffany Benham of the Pier Golf Team and Megan Bauck of the Pier Girls Tennis Team that will be coming up here on the program this evening. We'll return and talk with Steve Steele after this here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. At Shane's Pharmacy, your health care is important and Shane wants to be the pharmacist to take care of you. Shane's Pharmacy will make sure your prescriptions are filled in a timely manner, they will answer your questions, and they will even deliver to your home or office. Call 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy, the pharmacy you know and trust. The number again is 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy in Fort Pier, proud to support high school athletics. Have you ever wondered what the benefits are of becoming a Wahi Federal Credit Union member? At Wahi Federal Credit Union, we reinvest profits in you. We do this in the form of lower interest rates, higher dividends, and low to no fees. So come check us out or come in at 221 East Pleasant Drive in Pier. Because at Wahi Federal Credit Union, we treat our members like they own the place because, well, they do. Hawaii Federal Credit Union. Look, it's no secret that owning a vehicle can cause a lot of stress and they get a lot of wear and tear on them through every season. Graham Tire wants you to know that you can trust them with any problem that you have with your vehicle. They have fully trained ASE certified mechanics on staff ready to handle it for you. From brakes and bearings to alignments and front ends, let their experience work for you. Over 50 years combined means you can count on them. So if it's time for a transmission flush or even a simple oil change, the only name you need to know is Graham Tire, 421 West Sioux Avenue in Pier. You're listening to Coach's Corner on Central South Dakota's sports leader, KCCR. You like that? You like that? As we welcome you back to Coach's Corner here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com, join me as Coach Steve Steele here at the Pier Governors as they get ready for Brandon Valley. But let's first go back to last week, a Watertown game. Uh, moved it up an hour, was delayed it half an hour, got the game started and, and had to deal with some of the elements and a heavy downpour at one point, but uh, picked up the, the 49-20 win. Uh, biggest and best takeaway from that win on Friday? Uh, I think just being able to adjust. You know, I think our kids did a fantastic job of just kind of rolling with uh, with whatever it was, you know, because plans changed and uh, then they changed again and they changed again and, and you can't you can dwell on it and, and be upset and get out of rhythm or you can just roll with it and you know control what you can control and obviously be ready to play whenever it is that you get to play and you know I think they did a great job of uh, adjusting to all the different things that you had to adjust to and, and finding a way to win the game. Well you, you know we, we've talked about a lot of different times routine and how important it is to have that routine and how yeah you might talk about it and say well you just you moved it up an hour, you delayed it in half an hour. That's no big deal at all. But in guys' minds, to, to shut it off for a little bit, to, to get started back up, because you can't sit there for half an hour extra when, you, when you're when you kind of tuned up and ready to go and, and just continue to be that way. You're going to run out of energy before you even get started. It's a difficult thing to do. It's not easy to have a delay like that and still be focused like you normally would be with no delays. Yeah, you know, as, as cliche as it is to say, you know, you flip the switch when you get on the field, uh, it's not that simple. You know, I mean, obviously that's the end goal, uh, but it's not instantaneous like that, you know, just flipping a switch. Um, and, you know, the other part that was really difficult was just the, the warm-up. You know, I mean, we're used to getting out there, you know, an hour and 15 before the game and, and really taking our time to get through things. And, you know, we had 30 minutes and our quarterback was in a car going around the, the track. Our kicker was in the car going around the track for homecoming. So uh, essentially they got about a four-minute warm-up. 
Um, so, I mean, really just to be able to adjust to all those things and, you know, and not let it phase them too much uh, was great to see. Well, and I went back at one point because I could see it on our on our camera that, you know, we could see the rain coming through the camera, but went back and watched a little bit of it, and, and you can, one, see it, but then you can't hear the crowd anymore. All you do is just hear the rain falling, and obviously that's from us in the broadcast, but with you guys, sometimes it's hard to hear the crowd anyway because you're so focused on the game, but, I mean, there was almost probably no noise other than rain hitting the helmets, the the hats, the, the headsets. Well, what was that like on the sideline? Yeah, that, that middle of the third quarter was was really challenging, and you know we've got our headsets on and we're trying to communicate plays and all those things, and you couldn't hear. I mean, you, you couldn't hear. You have a headphone on and you can't hear anything other than just the rain pattering on it. Um, you, you couldn't really. I mean, I've got glasses. You couldn't even really see my glasses. Needed windshield wipers that couldn't keep up. Um, and that's with a hat on that's supposed to be covering the glasses. I mean, there was just no no place the rain couldn't find. You know, for in that probably ten to fifteen minute window in the third quarter. Um, and, you know, I think the, the funniest conversation was just like, we sure we want to be throwing in this? And it was just kind of, why not? You know, why, why not? Let's, let's just keep having fun. And, um, you know, you go back and you see some of those pictures uh, that, that the different photographers at the game took. And it's just incredible to see, um, you know, just how much rain was coming down, you know. And um, just, again, really proud of the guys for finding a way, you know, because, again, it's, it's so easy to, to roll a snap back or to, you know, lose control of the ball or anything like that. And, and really that was pretty minimal. Uh, field wise, how's the field conditions? You know, obviously playing through it, and, and the, that the water was draining to the to the sidelines and out of out of bounds territory. So it was doing its job to do that. But how did the field hold up and, and getting ready you now for the rest of the season? Yeah, you know, honestly, I think it was a lot, it looks a lot better than uh, we anticipated. Um, you know, the sidelines where all that water did drain to, those are pretty well destroyed, um, but those are off the playing surface, so that's good. Um, you know, we'll, we'll just stand in some mud. We'll get some mud boots for the rest of the year. Um, but other than that, I mean, the, the game field held up pretty decent. Um, you know, there, there's definitely spots where it's soft and there's some mud spots, but uh, there's still a lot of grass there too, so that was, that's good. Also, you know, the the aesthetics of the field uh, had had a big P in the middle. Uh, we can talk a little bit about the, the robot that you guys have to help paint the lines, which helps reduce you know, a lot of man hours and guys that uh, were out there, you know, they, they can do other things than just line the field all week long. They have other duties that they have to do anyway. Uh, but how nice uh, to, to kind of see some of that stuff uh, be, be utilized in, in, you know, one, to start with homecoming and then continue to add to it. Yeah, that was a neat deal, and then we had governors in the end zone for the first time. Uh, usually it's just pier, and, and we had governors in both end zones, which was really cool to see. Um, and, you know, I think that's just it's one of those things, too. I mean, having line fields before, too, not not here, but, you know, at Dakota State, no matter how well you try and how hard you work, they're never perfectly straight. You know, and that's, that's, not, that's just not a possible thing to do, uh, especially when there's a crown and there's all those other things and, and not perfectly flat in spots. It's just very difficult, um, you know, so – the computer, you know, it's GPS driven and, and the math works out so that it is perfectly straight. And man, it is just, it's just crazy to see the, the technology and, uh, you know, how helpful it can be. Uh, we want to talk about Brandon Valley because it's a big matchup. Uh, it was one of the best games last year in the state, uh, regardless of class. And uh, it was a fantastic game of two or three straight weeks uh, that you had some really great games beating Brandon Valley then beating T last year uh, with this Brandon Valley team it, there is uh, you know beef squad probably doesn't even do the justice of how big these guys are on, on the offensive line the defensive line you know college football college football teams are kind of jealous of what the Brandon Valley team has because they're they're averaging 6'3 293 a person uh, on their offensive line and and how how crazy is that? Have you ever seen anything in high school football, anything like what they have and how big they are? No, not not here. You know, I mean, if you go down to Texas and, and some of those states where, yeah, you, you probably see this a little bit more frequently. Um, but, you know, I was actually on the phone with one of my old friends that's a coach at a Oklahoma at a small college down there, and we were talking about the game, and he's asking how we're feeling. And I talked talk to him about the offensive line, he's was like, yeah, that, we have uh, one person that big uh, that starts for us, and we have zero that big on defense. So um, it is legitimately, you know, bigger than most small college lines. And, uh, you know, they, they've got two of them that already have Division One offers. Um, there could be more coming. You never know. I think they're, they're not all seniors either, which is even crazier to think that a couple of those big guys are sophomores and juniors. So um, it, it's going to be a it's going to be a challenge. But at the same point, it, those are that's what makes 
coaching fun is that you've got to find ways around those challenges and, and find ways to hopefully overcome. Well, have you seen anything uh, when you look at their offensive line and, and defensive line on film to, to pick apart and, and say we, we can exploit this or that uh, you know against that line? Uh, you know, I mean, we we hope we see some things, I guess. Um, but yeah, I guess we won't really know in, until we get to game time. Um, but yeah, this this is another week uh, that we're we're kind of moving things just a little bit and, and trying to adjust uh, to hopefully fit our personnel to whatever we're getting, you know. And I think obviously every team's had some different strengths and weaknesses um, offensively, and uh, you know you saw us change a little bit going into Yankton, and then uh, you know not too terrible much last week, but there'll be a little bit of change again this week to hopefully try and try and give us the best opportunity to be successful. Uh, you know, homecoming's behind you. You're halfway point of the season at five and zero. Grade your team so far. You know, a letter grade of of what this Pier Gunner team has been able to do. Uh, I think we're at a B. You know, I think we're we're doing good. Uh, by no means are we doing bad, but we can always be better. Um, and, and there's definitely moments uh, for all aspects of our game that um, we were not happy with. So, uh, you know, until we're all happy with everything, we're we're not an A yet. Uh, it, it gets this Brandon Valley team. Uh, what was going to be one of the biggest reasons here for the Governors to get a win? Uh, biggest thing uh, offensively, we've got to find ways to. to to move the ball um, and, and find obviously ways to score at the end of it but you know if we can stay on the field for a little bit longer drives I think that'll help us out and, and defensively the inverse of that they've got to find a way to win third downs um, you know this is a team that I, I think will get th- some third downs on uh, but we've got to find ways to get off and if, if we can get off on them early in the drives that'll really help our cause. Well the Pier Governors take on Braden Valley at 7 o'clock Friday night we'll have coverage starting at 6 30 on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Coach, I appreciate the time as always, and we'll talk to you Friday in the pregame show. Thanks, John. Back with more Coaches Corner after this here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. Building a home. It's the biggest investment most of us make in a lifetime. Not to mention it's a decision that, well, you pretty much live with day and night. The quality of the workmanship stares back at you like a reflection. It also affects the value of your investment. Choosing the right contractor is critical. Kruger Contracting is that contractor. Call 222-2523. Quality workmanship and materials completed on time. Kruger Contracting. In a word, quality. Call 222-2523. This fall, take some time to think about your future. While the leaves make their way down to earth and the last sunset of summer leaves us with an autumn chill, it's time to grab the nearest foam finger and break up the face paint. Rush the stands with First Dakota National Bank and forget how to blink. All sports are back with jaw-dropping plays, an electric atmosphere, and epic scores. Make some noise with First Dakota National Bank. Open a new account online today at firstdakotanationalbank.com. Member FDIC. That's a clown question, bro. You're listening to Coach's Corner on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. As we welcome you back here to Coach's Corner on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com, as we are joined here with Coach Tom Moore of the Soybeans Chargers in the midst of their bye week as they uh, last played on Friday against Harrod Selby area, and then will play next week Friday against the Lyman Raiders back at home. And, uh, Coach, let's let's jump back to last week here, a 28 nothing loss to Harriet Selby area. Uh, you, you, the game time got moved up three hours. Uh, everything that, you know, trying to avoid the weather, didn't have to worry about that on your guys' end. Uh, during that game, uh, but overall, y- your takeaway from that twenty-eight uh, nothing loss. Uh, you know, it, it lost. It kind of kind of stunk. Uh, so some good things that happened in it, and there's some some just some constant negative mistakes that keep keep happening that we got to keep shoring up. But that's you know the bonus of this week. Now going into the game, we talked about you got to stay on the first two punches. Me, me in the first two series and. We let them score in the first two series, and I know it's 14 nothing for, for quite a while, and they scored again at some point in the third quarter. So just you know, try, trying to keep keep maturing as a team and, and you know, take advantage of little things. Uh, but offensively, we, we struggled at times to move the ball, take care of things. It seems like we got something moving, a penalty negated something, or, or we had a turnover. So just we, we couldn't, get, couldn't get our offense going to kind of um, off-balance what they had going on against us. 
Well, and, and you get the bye week now, which maybe, you know, at week six or going into week seven, and you got uh, two games left to go after, you're, you know, two and four right now, but six games in, uh, it's got to probably be coming at a good time to, to get guys some rest and, and maybe, you know, challenge them a little bit more this week uh, during practice uh, to, because they can rest over the weekend. Uh, is this kind of at the right time? You know, it, sometimes uh, the season, even at week six or seven, you're saying, no, we, we want to keep playing, but is this kind of the right time to get the, the bye? week yeah yeah that's a decent time you know you kind of want it in the middle middle to, to two-thirds of your season just to kind of you know if i got to heal injuries or take care of that stuff or start shoring up some some schemes and, and things like that uh, so it came at a good time for us we can get healed up a couple of the bumps bruises that we had um, i know yesterday we got after it pretty good so we, we, we competed so we, we had a nice practice at the start of week of the bye week so I was, it's exciting to see the boys still working hard well, and that's another question too, because you know the being a class nine B school, the limited numbers, uh, and maybe maybe it's not, but kind of ask that question too. Is I'm sure practice maybe during the week you, you can't really hit guys hard against each other because uh, you want to make sure that everybody's ready to go for Friday. Not that you are expecting injuries this week by any means, but uh, are you able to kind of put the pads on and, and maybe go a little bit harder just because of, hey, you know, you might get banged up at practice a little bit, uh, but you have Friday off. We don't have to need you, uh, you know, to, to be at your hundred percent on Friday because you know we got that week off. It's a little bit easier to kind of to. Up, make an up tempo speed of practice, maybe a little bit, or just hit a little bit harder. Yeah, yeah, that, that's kind of, kind of where we're, we're right now. We're planning on going full pads all week, just to continue to try to create some physicality with with, with our team. Um, you know, it, it, it's it's good to see like some some of the drills that we're doing and, and how they're being physical yesterday. Just we need to, we just need to constantly keep rolling to to see it more on on the the game field a little bit more than we are, but. Yeah, it, it went well yesterday, and, and we're we're going to get after it this week. Like you said, with being nine B, it's just there's a fine line of, of when you only have so many kids to do things. To, how are we going to do this hit and drill? How much are we going to do it? How are we going to take take care of the kids? It's when you're playing pretty much eight or nine kids both ways all the time. You you, you hate for them to get injury. I know that one week we had injuries. We had two of them got hurt during the week, so that just made that that Friday night a little bit tougher when you're down three starters that are going to play most of the game. So it is what it is. That That's life of 9B, and there's not, not much we can change about this. we got to take care of what we can take care of. And again, talking with Coach Tom Moore here of the Sully Beast Chargers. In the midst of their bye week, they will play next week Friday at home against the Lyman Raiders. And then, you know, the question, too, is the Lyman Raiders playing in the press show on Friday against Bennett County. Uh, will you be in attendance? Will you, will you get a chance to get down there? Or how are you going to handle the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or at least Friday night uh, of having the bye week? You know, I, I debated on going down there or not. Just this day and age of film. It, it's, I mean, film film does just as well if you know how to watch film. It's it's just as easy to kind of see from there. Um, I debated on running down there. They're, they're a good football team. I watched a little bit about them. I know this week's going to be definitely us about the Chargers and the Chargers getting getting better. Next week we'll worry worry about Lyman, but I watched a little bit of their film and they're they're a good football team. So um, it'll be a great challenge for us next week. Uh, to then see, hopefully this week can help help us prepare for it. Well, and you kind of took the next question out of, of how much you're going to look at Lyman this week, and you, you said it's all about the Chargers. And, and again, you know, at, at week seven of the season, I know you mentioned that it's kind of nice to be at the halfway point or two-thirds when you get your bye week, uh, but but – a lot of teams, you know, if they've had their bye week, obviously Lyman's already had theirs and other teams have had their bye week that they don't get this late in the season and get a chance to, for a full week to worry about their own team where you guys get that opportunity this week to, to worry about the Chargers and then go worry about Lyman next week. Yeah, I, I totally agree. There's things that we, we just have to get better at. It doesn't matter who we play. If we make, make it first round to the Dome, wherever it is, there's things we got to get better at right now. So there's no better time than this week to to take care of those things of, of a little bit of blocking schemes and some some you know some some offensive stuff and just it, it, it's a good week for us to us to get better and and get ready for next week get ready for our next opponent. 
now for the coaching staff on the, the you know obviously the kids might feel a little bit more rested and you know they're they're high school kids so a hundred percent ninety percent they probably don't feel much different uh, not not when you get out of college and start to get uh, working every day that you start to realize what what uh, what it feels like to be about forty percent but the coaches do you, do you feel like after a bye week or during a bye week that you feel a little bit more rested yourself too. Yeah, a little bit. You're you're just not stressed about putting in a game plan, you know, from from Saturday sun and Sunday night, and having stuff ready for the kids on Monday. So it's just a little bit, you know, you know take take care of yourself a little bit, be with the family a little bit more, or you know, do, do things like that. I'm still watching pl- plenty of films, seeing that stuff. So, um, but we're we're not putting the pressure of of Lyman really on us this week. Uh, we'll worry about that. We'll have kind of a bonus day Monday. Usually, you're watching film, so we'll have a little more of a you know, have a three three day practice practice this, uh, week next week before Thursday's kind of you know pregame practice. So we'll gain a day next week because we won't have the, the the Friday night film to watch, and and we'll probably watch some film of of our opponent here this week and 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 starting next week. Again, talking with Coach Tom Moore here of the Soybeans Chargers. Uh, as again, they're they're bye week here. Play take on Lyman next Friday. DT will have the call from uh, from Oneida at Sully Buttes as they will host the uh, the Lyman Raiders next week Friday at seven o'clock kickoff. But uh, on the bye week this week, so coach, as we wrap things up here rather quickly, but uh, what's what's gonna be the biggest reason? I always say you know what's the biggest reason for the Chargers to get a win and all that stuff. But what's gonna be the what's the biggest reason that the Chargers get better this week? What's that number one thing that by the end of the week you say Sully Buttes got better at football here this week because of this? Yeah, our, our, our big stress kind of this week is, is continue to increase physicality, and we, we've done a bunch of tackling stuff. We got tackling stuff planned for the next couple of days. You know, that's one thing with not being a bye week is you can do a little bit of tackling here before you got to go into some blocking, before you got to go into some pass, and then you got to get into your opponent stuff. Where now you can add another fifteen to twenty minutes of tackling in each day with with you know not not as big of a worry of of your opponent or what scheme you're putting in for the week. So. We're we're heavy on tackling. We 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 have to get better at that. Again, if you're going to make any sort of run in, in into November, you got to be good tacklers. So that's physicality and tackling. What we're definitely focusing on this week. Well, Coach, hey, I appreciate the time as always. Good talking to you. Enjoy the the rest of this weekend, and uh, we'll, we'll be talking to you next Wednesday uh, on Coach's Corner here, getting ready for the Lyman Raiders uh, next week Friday. So uh, enjoy the rest of the week. I appreciate it. Thank you. That is head coach Tom Moore of the Soy Bees Chargers. We'll return with more coaches corner after this here on KCCO. Capital City Ford Lincoln Toyota is serving the Central South Dakota community and beyond with a great selection of used vehicles. Local trades and program vehicles are available. New Toyotas and new Fords are arriving and selling before they even hit the lot. So don't wait. Stop in and find out what's coming. If you've been thinking about ordering a new Ford, stop in and sit down with one of our sales specialists today. Capital City Ford Lincoln Toyota at 518 East Sioux Avenue and Pier. Call 605-224-7378 and visit CapitalCityFordToyota.com. No one likes to have electrical problems, but when they happen, call Todd's Electric at 223-2518. With over 30 years of experience, Todd's Electric can handle any type of electrical problem, whether it's residential, commercial, or agriculture. Their knowledgeable staff knows and understands the importance of your home, business, or ag facility and are prepared to help. That number again is 223-2518. Todd's Electric Service, serving the Pier Fort Pier area. Todd's Electric Service, the line to power. Hey, I'm just here so I don't get fined, so y'all can sit here and ask me all the questions y'all want to. I'm going to answer with the same answer, so y'all can shoot if y'all please. This is Coach's Corner on your home for the Pure Governors, KCCR, and online at kccrradio.com. As we welcome you back to Coach's Corner here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. Joining me is Coach Max, both of the Stanley County Buffaloes, who picked up a big win last Friday uh, over the White River Tigers and now four and one of the season and coach will jump into it here and, and talk about it because uh, you you sometimes you worry about a team uh, you know coming off of a big win and, and how the the feeling is going to be the next week and then you also have the other side where you lost your first game uh, a couple Fridays ago now against Bottom and you're worried about them it may be worried about how the team would re- uh, respond after the loss into the next game and well you didn't have to really worry about it because the team responded pretty well with the your second shutout of the season what'd you like about the response uh, from your team last Friday uh, yeah, the biggest thing was uh, we started physical and we started really aggressive and 
You know, it was a totally different mood coming out than it was against that Bond home game. Uh, you could tell that uh, those boys had that fire in them, and they were excited, and they were tired of getting talked to about starting flat against Bond home, and, and we certainly didn't start flat against White River. You know, we came out and, and played well, well right from the start, and despite all of the, the conditions and a lot of things not going our way as far as uh, some live ball penalties and things like that, and then uh, – we did fumble the ball four different times because of all the rain and the mud and everything else, and, and they fell on every fumble. So, you know, there was definitely times where we uh, we could have been frustrated, we could have been annoyed, and, you know, it could have went a different way, but kids were really resilient and really battled back and forth and, and really uh, were focused on that next play, and, and that next play uh, happened to be a good one for us. And, and like I said, I think we played really well uh, defensively as well. So it was a fun game for everybody. And you know, you mentioned the weather too, because it affected a lot of a lot of games all across the state. Uh, some with a lot of heavy rain, you know, some maybe didn't have so much rain, or the, the start time moved up to avoid it. But how'd you like your team playing in that uh, type of environment? And you know, again, because as you get later in the season and get in the playoffs. There's what a couple of years ago there was a snow game at the first round of the playoffs. So uh, the the weather can be anything at any point during the playoff game. Uh, how nice is it to play something like that and to play as well as you did? Yeah, it, it's definitely important. You know, it's like we told the kids all week. You know, there's certain things we can control and there's certain things we can't. And you know, we can't control the weather, but we can uh, we can control our attitude. We can control our effort and and play to the best of our abilities, and, and the guys did just that. So, yeah, it's, it was difficult. You know, it's frustrating because, and, you know, as a coach, you want to be able to do certain things, and and you want. And I'm sure the kids were frustrated, too. You know, some of the humble stuff, it's, it's not anything other than, you know, everybody's caked in mud, and the ball weighs a million pounds, and it's slippery, and, you know, it's just it's difficult. So it's it's tough to get upset about anything like that. You know, mistakes happen, and, and we were good, a good enough team to, to be able to, weather those mistakes and weather the storm and be able to play good football still, you know, you know, just like one of the most important things I think I've seen this season was our defense did not allow a, a first down throughout the whole game. So it was, uh, it was never a threat of white river getting back into the game because they had a really hard time moving the football because of what our guys were doing. So, you know, we knew we had enough points on the board after we got that first six, <laughs> but, uh, as a coach, we certainly wanted more, and we went and got some more too. So now, when you talk to the defense this week, because there, you know, a lot of times when you say, "Okay, you get a shutout," uh, what, what can you be improving on? Uh, then all of a sudden, you get a shutout with no first downs. What's the next thing to say to the guys saying, "Hey, we we were great, but uh, we still got to be better in this area"? Was there any what What did you have to pick and choose to say to the defense saying, "All right, this is how I'm going to challenge you guys to be better for next Friday." Yeah, that was that's an easy one for us. Uh, we didn't take the ball away. You know, it was White River fumbled the ball. I think it was four or five times as well, but they fell out on every darn one of them, and it's just kind of the way the ball bounced that night. So uh, we, I think we finished that game with no takeaways, and I think that might have been the first time all season that that happened. So that's our challenge to our defense, and we know that turnovers help win games, and they're super important and you know we need uh we need to do a better job of forcing some turnovers but like i said it was a it was a dominant defensive performance our guys played extremely extremely well uh coach off season coach gabriel did a great job of scheming up our defense and and the right spots all night long and and really physical Talking with Max Foth here of the Stanley County Buffaloes. They take on Timberlake on Friday uh, as the Buffs are now 4-1. and one. Timberlake is at 4-2. and two. And let's talk a little bit about that team. Uh, they've won their last two games against Jones County and uh, also shut out Faith, who is your last opponent of the season. But right now, obviously, your concern is Timberlake. What have you seen from them over those couple games? Uh, they you know, they lost to Dupree 26-6 where you guys beat them 40 to nothing. So some common opponents uh, for you guys. What have you seen from them on film that uh, – uh, you, you know we, that you like to see that you can go and exploit. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is Dupree's a well coached. Uh, excuse me, Timberlake's a well coached team. Uh, you know, I think they had a rough night against Dupree. Uh, I'm sure that's one of those games that they want back. You know, watching the film, it, it looked like they had a little little touch of the fumbleitis there and and couldn't hold on to the football. But you know, they they run solid scheme. They do a lot of quarterback run. Uh, they do a lot of deep pass shots and. And so we just got to be, just like we were against White River, you know, to be in the right spot defensively. 
Uh, offensively, you know, looking to run the ball as well as we have this season has go- is going to open up stuff in that deep passing game for us. So it's going to be important to establish the run and, and be able to be physical and tough up front like we know our guys can be. And, and when then they commit more guys to the box to try to stop some of our run game stuff, that's when we can take advantage of some of our speed and, and look to take some shot deeper down the field. So a uh, little bit of a chess match going in. You know, like I said, very solid team, uh, well-coached team, sound scheme. So we're going we're gonna to have to have everybody in the right spots and, and pick and choose when, when we take our shots on offense. You know, and was that kind of maybe a point too? Uh, you mentioned that when the, the pregame that uh, the, the the fumbleitis and and just won a game they would like to have back. It kind of to, to message to the guys saying, you know, yeah, we, we beat Dupree, they lost to Dupree. That doesn't that doesn't mean right now that we're going to beat Timberlake. W- w- did you kind of bring that message home, or uh, when they start when you guys were breaking down film, what what did you kind of say to make sure? Hey, you know, you, you got to make sure that you're staying focused and staying ready to play because it's not you know th- that doesn't mean anything. Yep, yep, you're exactly right. And, it, and and honestly, it's a good thing that you know we have the experience of the Bonhomme game to kind of lean back on. You know, going into that Bonhomme game, you know. We told the boys all week, it's a talented team, it's a good football team, despite what their record is. They played in a lot of tough games, and, and I think we kind of overlooked those guys a little bit, and, and that's why we started off so slowly and so poorly against them. So, you know, we're going to be making that point all week in practice, and, you know, it's it's a new game, and that's why they play them. You know, they, you can't scoreboard watch and think, well, because Team A did this, and Team B, Team C, and, you know, that's not how the game's played. The game's played out on the field, and and you got to go and go prove your worth and go prove your worth on the field. And, and we're looking forward to getting a chance to do that on Friday night. Again, they, they, uh, Salem County will take on Timberlake at 7 o'clock, a kickoff at Ole Williamson Field, and uh, talking with Max Foth here of the Salem County Buffaloes, who uh, right now are in a spot. Uh, if the season had ended today, they'd be hosting a first-round game. But, Coach, you know the, the nice thing, too, is uh, you, you control your own destiny to host a first-round game. How nice is it to be playing two of these last three games and back-to-back games at home uh, to get those uh, couple wins, try and get those couple wins to, to solidify uh, the Salem County Buffaloes, at least having one one uh, home game for sure in the playoffs. Yeah, it's important. You know, as a program, it's one of our goals that we have each year is, is to try to host a playoff game because in order to host a playoff game, you have to do some really good things during the regular season. And, you know, I think that this team is a good football team with an opportunity to be great. And we're uh, we're lucky to have a few more opportunities on Friday nights to, to hopefully change from a good football team to a great one. You know, I, I truly believe that you know, we have so many talented kids, and, and I think we have one of the best, uh, I have some of the best assistants in all of nine-man football, and, and we're, heading, we're heading in the right direction, and we got a few more weeks to, to get going and, and get to that second season. So like you said, it's, it's important. It's a goal of ours. We talk about it. You know, it's one of those things that as a program, you know, not just to host a playoff game this year, we want to host playoff games yearly and, and uh have people have to come to Fort Pierre to come play a game. And uh, nothing better than catching a game uh, at Ole Williamson Field, and you can do that on Friday night as the Salem County Buffaloes are hosting the Timberlake Panthers kickoff at 7 o'clock in Fort Pier at Ole Williamson Field. Uh, Coach, before I wrap, wrap things up here, what's the biggest reason for the Stanley County Buffaloes? Why would it be the biggest reason that the Buffs win this game against Timberlake and move to 5-1? and one? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for us is, is to not give up the big play, you know, as you look at their film and you look at the, the type of athletes they have, they definitely have the ability to score from a long ways out. And uh, we got to try to take away the big plays from them and really make them try to, you know, have multiple play drives. And I think if we do that, our defense is, is good enough that uh, we'll get a, we'll get plenty of stops. And then, like I alluded to earlier, hopefully our defense can get a few more takeaways. And then hopefully it's just – you know, being disciplined up front, following your rules, uh, as long as our offensive line plays well up front, uh, I feel like we should give ourselves a chance to win on Friday night. Well, Coach, hey, I appreciate appreciate the time as always. Uh, good luck on Friday. Looking forward to talking to you again next week as we are hitting down the stretch. There's three games left in the regular season. Hard to believe we're already there, but uh, good luck Friday, and we'll talk to you again next week. Sounds good. Thank you. That is head coach Max of the Stanley County Buffaloes. More coaches going after this here on KC. 
Score big on your next vehicle purchase with Lamb Motor Company in Oneida and Gettysburg, Lamb Chevrolet and Implement in Oneida, and Lamb Auto Sales in Pier. Check out their large selection of new and pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs at any one of their locations or go online to lambmotor.com. That's L-A-M-B-M-O-T-O-R.com. Or give them a call today at 800-952-2222. Lamb Motor Company of Oneida and Gettysburg, Lamb Chevrolet and Implement in Oneida, and Lamb Auto Sales in Pier. Ah, why am I so sore? There are everyday moments. Whoa, hey, hold the ladder! Hold the ladder! Oh, oh. Yeah, that hurt. And there are epic moments. Slide, 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 Colin! Slide, slide, Class of 1995! Slide, slide, slide. When a moment creates a health need, visit the experts at Avera Orthopedics. We're moving health forward so you can tell the story. Learn more at avera.org slash orthopedics. Let me talk to you. You're listening to Coach's Corner on Central South Dakota's sports leader, KCCR. Yeah. As we welcome you back to Coach's Corner here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. Joining me is Coach Tiffany Benham here of the Pure Governor Golf Team. As they get set now, the ESD is behind them. They played Monday. The state tournament is coming up Monday, Tuesday this next week back in Brandon. And, uh, Coach, it's good to talk to you, and, and let's kind of jump into it here. Uh, overall, the season, uh, let, actually, let's start with the ESD here. What did you like about what the, the those guys were able to do? Uh, what do you think, you know, going into now the state tournament, what needs to be better for this guy? governor team to to take that next step and get a state championship um i think overall with uh esd i think we were a little bit disappointed in our fourth place finish i think as a team overall however we did have a couple players that actually played really well for us and that would have been um jack bartlett and charlie simpson they played very well um unfortunately i think that and for sun and shine of course he played well he's been kind of our study all year long but um, I think Luke Olson and Nick Boffin and Lincoln Huska were a little bit disappointed in their, their performance at ESD. And I think for us to be, you know, a really solid team and compete for a state championship, we have to have four guys, you know, perform, you know, very well. Um, and I think that's kind of been uh, an issue for us all year of, is having four solid scores. You know, typically we have three really great scores, and then maybe the fourth one is not where it needs to be. So for us, coming Monday, our goal and our hope is that we have four solid scores um, that put us in contention. Well, you know, and, and looking back at Yankton, you guys played there a couple weeks ago too, and it, it, it seemed like if there was one golf course that kind of really maybe frustrated this governor of golf team, it, it seemed like Yankton, you guys played well at a lot of other courses, just seemed like Yankton was that one for a couple guys that uh, they're probably happy to, to not have to play there again for the rest of the year. Yeah, the, I think there's there's definitely one kid that is happy that they don't have to play there again this year, and that would be Nick, because I think you know, overall, Nick has played really well for us. You know, he's, you know, he's won a tournament. He's, he's, well, he actually won two tournaments, but they did a scorecard playoff. But, um, and he just didn't do very well the two times we played there. And he obviously can play anywhere and play well, but for some reason, that course, he just did not like. <laughs> well, it, you know, and, and to the, your point, too, you mentioned that he won twice. One was a scorecard playoff, too, but uh, that this governor team has been uh, within reach of winning all of these events. While you haven't had that team win, uh, just a couple of shot different, uh, whether it be for you guys or for the other team that goes the other way, all of a sudden, you guys have won almost all but maybe one or two. Uh, this has been a team that has been right within reach all season long of competing for team wins, which uh, leads to then the state tournament being uh, very up for grabs and very opportunity for the governors to win. Absolutely. You know, I think what, what people don't realize is that boys golf, I feel like we're living in unprecedented times because these kids are playing phenomenal. And I don't think, you know, I think people only see the headlines, you know, Govs plays second, they place third, they place fourth. But what they don't realize is that these scores are historically low. And, you know, when you're going up against teams that are shooting off of their school records, you know, in the books, I mean, it's it's a very it's very competitive and sometimes it's I feel like they're, you know, a little bit disheartened because, you know, they're not getting the recognition I think that they deserve. Um, but I think, you know, their their competition is the best in their school history too. And I think, you know, there's four schools that on any given day could be a state champion. 
you know, with Harrisburg, Watertown, and O'Gorman, and us. So it's going to be a really interesting two days when we get to the state tournament. Yeah, you, you just mentioned it too, that uh, being some of the, the best golf in the state that the state maybe has ever seen with a lot of teams, and as you mentioned too, the governor's playing the, the best golf. And it, it, like you mentioned too, that you see these scores, and and regardless of where they finished it was second or third, but a lot of times when you look back at the years past, this governor team is – much lower. They, they've lowered their scores. It just everybody else is kind of following suit with them. Uh, so uh, how how do you handle that too? Because you mentioned that you know sometimes it's a little bit frustrating because you're playing so well, you're playing even better than what you did the the year or the week before, and and still can't quite get a win or can't quite pass that next guy. Is it frustrating? Is it is it okay with the guys? How do you, how do you handle that too? Well, I think it, it's been really frustrating for them because I think they know that they're really good golfers and but they know that their competition is really good too but I think what what they need to do is they they actually just have to have confidence in their own game I think sometimes they they focus on what's happening around them and not just focus on their game and stick to their plan and so I think sometimes they take risks that they shouldn't because maybe you know they got a bogey now they have to you know, have the next hole, I have to try to get a birdie, you know, to stay with my competition. When in reality, what they need to do is just block out what's happening around them and just stick to their game and their game plan. And I think that they'll be a lot more successful. Talking with Coach Tiffany Benham here of the Peer Governor Golf Team as they get set for the state tournament starting on Monday, Tuesday of next week in Brandon. Uh, they were there at the beginning of the season, now back at the end of the season, but playing twice, uh, obviously, uh, the same course on Monday and Tuesday. And, uh, you know that's I guess that's got to be hard because you know anybody that goes out and golf uh, obviously is not nearly as good as what these uh, golfers have been able to do for the pure governors, but uh, it, it is really challenging after a bad hole to try and maybe test it a little bit farther and say, well, I, I got to take a risk here, I got to take a risk there, uh, but but especially in over a two day tournament, the the mistakes that are limited is going to be the reason why you end up as close as you can to the top of the standings. Absolutely. I think that we just need to minimize, you know, if if we do get in trouble, let's just try to get out with a bogey and not make it, you know, a double or a triple. And then if we play smart, we're going to be right in the hunt. How, again, how difficult to, th- or through a two-day tournament is it to, to continue to play smart? How much do you, you know, over the last couple of years with these guys, you know, the same guys that have been competing for the last uh, several years for Pierre, how difficult is it to, to talk with them? Are you seeing them mature a lot more uh, of playing smart through a two-day tournament? Yeah, I think that they know. I think they've, I've preached to them enough about playing smart that they they really do want to play really well. And I think sometimes, you know, during regular season, they're like, ah, oh, it's just one tournament, not that big a deal, you know, if I take some risks. But I think now I think that they do realize that I'm just going to have to play smart, stick to the game plan, and what happens, happens. I can't control anything else that happens other than myself. You guys played in a two-day tournament back at the beginning of the season. Brandon was one of those golf courses, but played in Brandon, then in Sioux Falls. Uh you know, having that uh, opportunity to play in the two-day tournament and seeing where, where you guys finish in day one, and then trying to, to keep that up and keep that same place and trying to increase this, or I guess decrease the score, but increase your place. Uh, how? W- what's that like? You know, after day one, before day two, what's that like overnight to try and you know keep everybody, whether they're in contention, whether they're uh, maybe farther out than they like to be, but have to make sure they continue to play smart. How is that to, to handle uh, the, the mental game overnight and not just for the entire day, for one day? I think that, you know, if we're, you know, if we're in the top four within, you know, a few strokes of the, the rest of the, the group, I think that they do know that they can play really well in Brandon. I think they had com- they have confidence going into the course. Because, you know, we we did play really well there. You know, our first meet of the year, we took second out of every single, you know, double-A team there. And they know the course very well. They know that they can play, you know, within a championship reach. So I think it's just, you know, like I've said before, just sticking to the plan and not trying to do anything big or spectacular. And then I think that we actually could surprise a lot of people. 
Oh, absolutely. This governor team has been a lot of fun to, to follow throughout the year and to see the, the scores that they have been putting up. Uh, talking with Coach Tiffany Benham here of the Pier Governor Golf Team. They have the state tournament Monday, Tuesday, and Brandon. Uh, real quick, kind of go through the, the outline of the, the weekend. Do you guys get a practice round on Sunday or at any point during the weekend? What's the Is there a practice round to, to, to go play and when would that be on uh, in Brandon? Um, yes, we play on Sunday at around, I think it's noon we play. We play at noon, so we'll practice um, there, and then we'll probably, um, later in the evening, we'll probably hit up another golf course, um, driving range, and perfect a few things, get ourselves mentally comfortable and ready for Monday. And then uh, you guys uh, tee off at 9 o'clock in that uh, f- that first group on uh, Monday as well. Uh, how I know every season can kind of maybe be a little bit long and then feel really short at the end, but how quick has this golf season gone for you? Because it feels like we just were talking about the opening meet a, a week ago. <laughs> it it. It is. It, it's a short season. There's, but there's a lot of meat, you know, compacted in a in, into a very uh, short time. But I don't know. I'm not ready for the season to end. I know that the boys aren't ready for the season to end. Um, but I think that you know we we're as ready as we're possibly going to be. And you know, I guess it is what it is. Where we land, we land. Well, I, I know you've kind of answered this a, a couple of times already, but I'm going to ask you one more time here in, in our final question before we, we let you go. What's going to be the, the biggest reason for the peer governors to uh, end up in the, the spot they want to be at, whether that be a state champion or uh, it, you know second place finish in, in that top three? What's going to be the biggest reason for the governors to make that happen? They have to play their own game. They can't worry about everybody else in their group. They have to block them out and just do the best that they possibly can. Well, Coach, hey, I appreciate the time. Coach Tiffany Benham here of the Peer Governors. As they, Again, they take on uh, the, the state tournament coming up Monday, Tuesday in Brandon Valley. That golf team is uh, is something special, and we're, we're excited to see what they can do. Coach, I appreciate the time. Uh, have fun out there. Safe travels to Brandon. Have fun over the next of those couple of days of the state tournament, and uh, good luck uh, coming up next week. All right. Thanks for having us on. Absolutely. That is Tiffany Benham of the Peer Governor Golf Team. We'll return with more Coaches Corner after this here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. It takes hard work to reach goals. It's a truth that applies to more than just sports. It also goes for your financial goals. You work hard for your money. You deserve an investment strategy that lines up with your game plan. Your local Edward Jones financial advisor can help. If your investments aren't getting you closer to the win, visit edwardjones.com or stop by your local peer area Edward Jones office for a financial review. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Member SIPC. Hey, hey you, are you at a job that is fulfilling, has good benefits to support you or a family today, and retirement goes down the road? If you just said no, listen up. CHS River Plains is hiring operations personnel, drivers, and custom applicators at several locations. These come with a knockout affordable benefit package for you and the whole family. Apply to a job with CHS River Plains and up your benefits straight up. To apply, visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in at one of our locations. CHS is an equal opportunity employer. You're listening to Coach's Corner on Central South Dakota's sports leader, KCCR. You like that? You like that? As we welcome you back to Coach's Corner here on KCCR and on, online at kccrradio.com, joining me is Coach Megan Bauke of the Peer Governors, who just wrapped up the ESD, now getting set for the state tournament on Monday and Tuesday in Sioux Falls. And let, let's go through the ESD. Obviously, you got a chance to host it, which is fantastic. I, mm-hmm. You know, the, the time that I've been here, I, I don't know the last time that Peer has hosted the ESD tournament. So yeah. to be able to host it, how much... How much fun and, and all the work that went in to make <laughs> sure that uh, event went off so well. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, but definitely a lot of fun. Um, I had a great team helping me pull it together, um, and so I definitely was appreciative of all the help and um, support I got from admin, and um, Steve Steele was helping us run things, and Brian Mosier, of course, is awesome. Um, but yeah, it ran really smoothly. This was the first time they went to a two day setup instead of trying to cram all those matches into one day. So that was helpful, not only from a logistics standpoint, but also from like giving the girls more rest time. Cause normally they would get about five minutes in between every match and then they'd have to go again. And sometimes they were playing eight matches in a day otherwise. So this 
was it was a great experience and i think the girls had a lot of fun and enjoyed it a little bit more than years past so <laughs> well jocelyn Krause and caitlin odd got yep. third and uh, doubles flight two bailey jessen got six in the singles <laughs> flight four uh those those three girls in the two flights what would you like yeah. about what they did yeah they um they went out and played some really nice tennis um caitlin and jocelyn um obviously they are are only two this year with experience um and especially you know, it's a different beast playing a conference tournament versus just the duels we've been doing all year long so far for our season. Um, so definitely their experience showed through um, and they were able to pull out a couple W's. Um, Bailey played really well as well. Um, she, um, you know, she also dug deep and leaned into some experience she had playing upper JV last year. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think um, we had a we had a strong outing considering how fresh we were as a team. Um, and, you know, we've got a lot of room to grow, but I was impressed with how those girls performed. So. Yeah, and, and, you know, it's not going to be the same teams here. I was going to be the only team that you saw in the ESD that will be back in class day. But how mm -hmm. nice is it to get those, those younger girls the experience of a tournament, of a two-day tournament like that, going into the fact that uh, you'll have the state tournament over two days Yeah, well. Yeah, it is really nice. Um, you know, yeah, all but two of our girls girls are new to this kind of thing and so trying to you know having them you know get experience with this and it being home kind of takes a little pressure off too and you know makes it a little bit more um, doable for them but they yeah they gained some really nice experience against some of the toughest teams that we'll see and um, now going into the state tournament you know a lot of those teams will not be in our state tournament and so it'll be different competition but the same level of competition in a way um, and so just trying to, you know, get this out of our system and now we regroup for state and we go in and just um, do our best tennis and kind of see where we're sitting and then have the have the couple practices here to really gear up and be ready for that. Well, and it's, I mean, it is nice, too, to maybe to get rid of some of those teams. Mm -hmm. And, you know, th those are some tough teams. The ESD is always a tough probably the toughest conference in in the state yeah but regardless of the sport whether yep. it's tennis or any other sport so it's got to be For nice sure. to kind of move away from seven of those eight teams and here i'll be yeah. the only team uh, going into class a yeah for sure yeah we're so yeah we're looking forward to um you know competing against the teams that are in our state division and um obviously you know we get better when we play better teams and so and that's exactly what esd does for us and so we we appreciate the challenge it provides but we're ready to you know buckle down coming into state next week so so it is in sioux falls mm -hmm. uh you know what, what's but going into monday and tuesday you know how excited is this team to maybe not so much for the season to come to an end but excited to get to that state tournament yeah yeah they're looking forward to it um you know obviously um you know we're a fresh team and even though you know we have the we are going into it as the defending state champs we're kind of looking at it as kind of just a fresh start um as you know see where we land get these girls some experience especially the ones that you know this will be their first state tournament of many to come um hopefully um so yeah get you just kind of get get into it see how we how we fare and um go from there so yeah uh, and, and you mentioned too you know jocelyn Krause and kayla and i come off defending state champions mm -hmm. in in their flights uh what, what do you expect from them now you know getting into their last couple of years of, of or last year yeah. of being together too yeah um you know it's bittersweet um they i know you know they've played varsity for six years but this is the first time they've played upper level varsity um you know they were flights four and six last year and now they're playing flights one and two and that's hard to go in week after week and play the very best players every single team has to give you week after week that's a lot of pressure and that's um, you know, and they've, they've handled it really well though. You know, it, they have a lot of experience playing varsity and so that definitely is a factor and they've been awesome leaders for our girls um, throughout this year. And so they'll definitely be missed. Um, but you know, they, we are, the future is bright for pure tennis. We've got a lot of young up and comers. And so this will be a great learning experience for them to get under their belts and see where they go from here then. I uh, say flights three through six, all those girls are making their, their state tournament yep. debut. Yep. What, what do you expect? You know, what, what's the, the message to start well? You know, how do you handle two-day tournament, state tournament, make sure that they start well, get in that winner's bracket right away? Yeah, um, so, you know, we'll see how the seeds end up. I think we'll be sitting pretty decent for seeds um, um, starting it. But, you know, the biggest thing is just really make it out of that first round um, and go from there. You know, if we can get those points, from the first round on, um, that'll really make a big difference in our score. Um, as many girls as we can get to the semifinals is our main goal. 
Um, and if we can do that, we will be sitting pretty good, you know, in all nine of our flights, our three doubles and our six flights of singles. Um, that's kind of our, our main goal. And then, um, you know, if we can get some that go past that, that's even better. But, um, but yeah, that's, it's, it's more tough teams and more, you know, rebuilding for us. And so it's just, it, the other thing is, you know, it's hard going into a big tournament. The jitters really get a hold of a lot of girls, especially when this is their first one. Um, so just trying to keep them calm and stay cool under pressure and be consistent and is going to be our main emphasis here these next three days of practice as we gear up. So. And you mentioned the jitters, mm -hmm. and we kind of mentioned it last year, but maybe now with the, the newer girls too, is it nice to not have to, that you don't know your opponent until late Sunday night, you know, to, that way you're not stressed about, okay, this is what I did against this girl. Yeah. And, you know, you're not so worried about your first round opponent and, until you pretty much show up mm -hmm. Monday morning. Yeah, yep. I'll get um, I'll get the seeds um, sometime over the weekend, um, and then if there's any appeals, those will happen Sunday night. And so the, the finalized bracket won't really be final until um, Sunday night. And even then, sometimes the girls don't want to know until they just see who walks on the court with them. But <laughs> <laughs> So there's, there's pros and cons to both of that, I suppose. But, you know, tennis is a sport. It's so mental. And so, it, you know, any given day, anybody can win. And so you just have to be in the right headspace. And, um, and I think that's something we've really worked on and the girls have gotten a lot better at. And just being out there, you know, be consistent, play your game, um, and, you know, adjust if things aren't going your way along along the course of the match. So. Again, talking with Megan Bauck here of the Pure Governor tennis team as they get set Monday, Tuesday for the state tournament, uh, for the Class A state tournament in Sioux Falls. Uh, before we wrap things up here, what's going to be the what's the biggest reason uh, going into day one that the, the governors are going to be sitting in a good spot to maybe repeat as state champions, but just put themselves in that top group? What's going to be the biggest reason to get that done? Um, I, you know, they our leadership has been really awesome. You know, Jocelyn and Caitlin, um, as previous state champs, you know, they they have a lot of pressure on them being higher flights than they were last year. Um, but they, they've been great leaders. They know, they've been telling the girls, you know, exactly what to expect and here's how state works. And, you know, so I think that um, leadership will come into it. Um, and, you know, I just, I think they're just, you know, they're excited and, you know, the newness factor is there for a lot of them. And so I think they're just, they're just looking forward to, you know, finally stepping into these really huge shoes that they left for them from last year. So I think a lot of girls are just hungry to have that experience for themselves and see what, you know, state's all about. And, you know, start the start the fight to be state champs again. Well, Coach, hey, I appreciate the time. It's always good talking to you. We'll, we'll try and get in touch maybe Monday night, if not Tuesday, after sure. the state tournament. Uh, but but have some fun out there in Sioux Falls. Hopefully the girls have a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, play, play some good tennis. But uh, good luck next week, and we'll talk Perfect. to you again soon. Thank you so much. That is head coach Megan Bauck of the Pier Governors tennis team as they start the state tournament on Monday and roll into Tuesday of next week. Back with more Coaches Corner after this here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. As community bankers, BankWest employees are deeply committed to supporting local causes, growing the local economy, and creating local opportunities. At a time when you can bank anywhere, we hope you choose BankWest. We'll be your financial partner for the long haul, helping you and your community achieve financial success. BankWest. Convenient. Connected. Committed. Member FDIC. Most of us already know that Gale's Gas of Pier is the place to call for propane. They offer an automatic fill plan so you never have to worry about running out of propane. They accept debit and credit payments or a budget payment plan to spread out the cost throughout the year so you never have surprises when you get your bill. For delivery, convenience, and great customer service, call Gale's Gas at 224-5518. That's Gale's Gas at 224-5518. You're listening to Coach's Corner on Central South Dakota's sports leader, KCCR. Yeah. As we welcome you back to the KCCR studios one more time here this evening as we wrap up another edition of Coach's Corner. I want to thank our coaches, Steve Steele, the Pier Governors, Tom Moore of the Sullivan Chargers, Max Voth of the Staley County Buffaloes, and then as well as Tiffany Benham of the Pier Boys Golf Team and Megan Bauck of the Pier Girls Tennis Team as they will have their state tournaments starting Monday and Tuesday. We'll have coverage on our website at kccradio.com for both those tournaments, along with brackets, tee times, scores, all of that with those respective stories 
at kccrradio.com. Don't forget, we got baseball coming up here tonight. So the coverage will start at 8.30 between the Houston Astros and the Seattle Mariners. We've got coverage up here at volleyball tomorrow night, coverage at 6.30 and first serve at 7 o'clock. 6.30 starts coverage on Friday for a pier football against Brandon Valley with kickoff at 7 o'clock. And then the pier, uh, pier volleyball team will be hosting Brandon Valley on Saturday as we'll have that on KCCR. And, of course, those games are available to watch on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Just like every Coach's Corner video, you can watch it anytime and play back at YouTube at KCCR Sports. That'll wrap things up for us here this evening as we, again, have coverage of baseball coming up at 8.30. And we'll see you next week, same time, same place, 5.30 right here on KCCR. Have a good rest of your Wednesday. You've been listening to Coach's Corner on KCCR and online at kccr.com. Coach's Corner is brought to you by Todd's Electric, Shane's Pharmacy, Lamb Motors, Avera, Owahi Federal Credit Union, Edward Jones Financial, Graham Tire, Kruger Contracting, CHS River Plains, Gales Gas, Bank West, and Capital City Ford Lincoln and Toyota. To hear the show again, head to YouTube at KCCR Sports for shows at any time. This has been a special presentation of Riverfront Broadcasting Sports, Central South Dakota's sports leader.